What an interview that was. It literally broke the internet yesterday with the Elon Musk and Trump interview. That was absolutely crazy. But what we care about is how does this interview benefit Tesla? Today, the stock is up like 5 6% because PPI came much better than expected. Well, not much better, but better than expected. And there's some things that Trump did say yesterday and the attitude and just the energy just made it a lot more bullish for Tesla and a lot of things that he said as well. And so in this video, we're going to get down to how does the Elon Musk Trump interview benefit Tesla and Tesla investors? It, I've said it before, guys, that Trump is bullish for Tesla. And yesterday's talk with him, with Elon, it really solidified that. So let's get down to it. Smash that like button and let's get down to it because there was a lot of juicy stuff. So first things first. I made a highlight video of all this. So if you guys missed out, check the video right here, all the highlights. And there's time steps so you guys can go ahead and, you know, see what, you know, the thing that they were talking about. There's a lot of political things. But what we care about in this video is the Tesla stuff. Because we are Tesla investors. I'm going all in Tesla stock. And a lot of conspiracy out there. A lot of negative news out there saying that Trump is bad for Tesla. Mm -mm. Nope, he is not. So... Let's get down to it. The first thing, Trump made it clear that he likes Tesla. He calls the vehicles incredible. Now, it's good to see him say that because now he's acknowledging that, hey, man, Tesla cars, you know, they're good stuff. And people who follow Trump, people who are behind Trump and support Trump, majority of them are not EV lovers. So it's very important for him to say that because those who don't believe in EVs, now all of a sudden, someone that they really admire a lot, which is Donald Trump, now said that their car are incredible so you know what you know what they're gonna do they're gonna go to the Tesla website they're gonna read about it they're gonna learn about it they're probably gonna go for a test drive it's good marketing it's free marketing pretty much at this point it's absolutely it's genius it's absolutely incredible but he said the cars are great they're incredible but not everyone should have an electric car because he is pro-choice but that's a minor detail he did say that but your products are incredible so he acknowledges that yo your products are nice they're great. Although we can't make it an, a mandate, we can't force people to drive EVs. And that's a minor detail, right? Not a big thing. Your cars are incredible and they're great. Hinting that, hey, I'm not against EVs. Your car are amazing. They're really good cars. EVs are good cars. It's just that we can't force people to drive only EVs. Even though the market is going towards that route anyways, it's just until when everybody wants to drive an EV, there should be a choice for people to get gas cars too. So that was... That was one point that was like, okay, that was acknowledgement. That was great. Something that Biden would probably never do. Probably won't even say the name Tesla or even say anything about the cars or probably won't even say in one. I don't know. What doesn't matter about that? But he did say that. Now, moving on to another thing that he said, because I'm going by order. I'm not going, I'm not jumping around. I'm just going to go by order what has been said. He said, and I'm talking about Elon Musk here, not Donald Trump right now. So Elon Musk, he said he is happy to help out as to be part of the Government Efficiency Commission, where they look into government spending to make sure that it's not going to waste, the government is not overspending, all that kind of stuff that's kind of needed in governments because we are, you know, governments, they overspend, right? And he does, Elon does say that inflation is cause of all that kind of stuff. He talks about all that in that interview as well. But Elon said he's happy to help out and Donald loves the idea, showing that Trump loves Elon. Now, maybe he may become president and may, may not bring Elon on the board. That doesn't matter. It's the fact that he loves the idea, showing that he likes Elon. And this is important, guys. Biden, when Biden came into power, everyone's, well, when he became president, everybody thought that, okay, this is bullish for Tesla. This is great. You know, we got a guy who's going to push for EVs, all that kind of stuff. Hold behold, the guy doesn't even mention the name Tesla. The guy has an EV summit, but doesn't invite Elon Musk. AI summit doesn't invite Elon Musk. And Anything to do with EVs doesn't even mention Tesla or even Elon Musk. What? Like, it was weird. But then with when Trump was president, he always brought Elon to the board. He always brought him, you know, when he talked to business leaders and all that kind of stuff, he made sure Trump, he made sure that Elon was there because, you know, Elon, he's technically running the world in a way. You know what I mean? With electric vehicles, SpaceX, Boring Company, X, Neuralink, I don't know, my list keeps going on and on. So if you don't have Elon Musk at the table, you're losing. And the fact that Biden missed him, didn't even invite him. Forget the other things. The EV summit, he didn't invite. That was a slap in the face for just not just Tesla investors, but to Elon as well. So this part right here shows me that Trump likes Elon and he wants to work together. And which is a very, very bold sign indirectly for Tesla, because then later on they can talk. And hey, Elon does talk about Tesla 
with him directly in this interview as well, which was extremely flippant bullish. Check out this clip because it's pretty interesting and Trump's reply was pretty interesting as well. Check it out. I mean, I should probably say something about like, you know, maybe, maybe my views on climate change yeah. and oil and gas, because uh, I, mean, I think I'm probably different from what most people would assume. My view is, is like, we do over time want to move to um, a sustainable energy economy because eventually you do run out of, I mean, you run out of oil and gas. It's, it's not there, for, it's not infinite. And there is there is some risk. I think it's not, the risk is not as as high as, uh, you know, a lot of people say it is with respect to global warming. But I think if, if, you, if you just keep increasing the parts per million in the atmosphere, uh, long enough, eventually it actually simply gets uncomfortable to uh, to breathe. <laughs> People don't realize this. If you go past a thousand parts per million of, of CO2, uh, you start getting headaches and nausea. We're now in the sort of 400 range. We're adding, I think, about roughly two parts per million per year. I do say, though, I've heard in terms of the fossil fuel, because even to create your electric car and create the electricity needed for the electric car, you know, fossil fuel is what really creates that at the generating plants. So you sort of can't get away from it at this moment. I mean, someday you might be able to, but I do hear we have anywhere from 100 to 500 years left. You know, much of it hasn't even been found yet. I think it, it is something we, we need to, to move towards. And on, you know, on balance, it's probably better to move there faster than slower. But, but like I said, without vilifying the oil and gas industry uh, and, and, and without causing hardship in the short term. So Elon's explanation was actually spot on. He was right. He got to the point. He, I mean, someone who was is an activist who, you know, is against EVs and hears about this or, you know, climate change and hears about this would really change their mind. It was well explained, pretty much telling him that, hey, over time, oil and gas, yes, there's so many oil and gases fields that we haven't even found yet. And that's absolutely true. But eventually we're going to run out. And if we don't run out of it, which obviously one day we will run out of it, it'll continue to give CO2 to the environment. And it's going to get to a point where we can't breathe properly. We're going to have headaches, all these things that are proven. So over time, we must have a sustainable renewable energy solution to it, which Tesla is doing and he did mention tesla here and there as well saying the sexy vehicles all that kind of stuff as you guys just listened but trump shrugs it off a little bit and says hey evs to a degree uses oil and gas to electrify evs now here's the thing i don't think trump is fully educated with tesla like their supercharger network is 100 percent renewable energy system energy now at home when you charge at home yeah, that's coming from oil and gas, whatever the source is. It's not coming from renewable energy unless you have solar panels on your roof. To that degree, I I fully accept that, 100%. But I just don't think Trump is fully educated on how Tesla is. I don't think he has a clear picture of how we're going to get to sustainable energy soon. So there's a way to go to educate Trump on these things. But I'm sure if he keeps Elon close, he's going to change his mind or at least help him understand better. Now then, Elon tries again to explain the importance of clean and sustainable energy. But I think we should just generally lean in the direction of, of sustainability. I actually think solar is, is going to be a majority of, of Earth's uh, energy generation uh, in the future. And it's certainly trending that mm -hmm. way. And and so you get the solar power, mine that with, with, with batteries, So uh, because obviously the sun doesn't shine at night. And then you use that to charge the electric cars and you have a long-term sustainable solution. And you know that, that's what Tesla is trying to move things towards. And I think we've made a lot of progress in, progress in that regard. But when you look at our cars, we like we don't believe that environmentalism, that caring about the environment should should mean that you have to suffer. So we make sure that our cars are are beautiful, that they drive well, that they're fast, they're you know sexy. I mean they're they're, they're cool. In fact, literally, I mean the sexy joke Model S, Model Three, Model X, and Y spells out sexy. It's probably the most expensive joke out there. You know, you know it's very interesting. Uh, you use the word global warming, and today they use the word climate change because you know you have some places that go up, so they were getting themselves in a little trouble with the the word global warming because not every place is warming. Some places are going the opposite direction. But you know, I'm I'm sort of waiting for you to come up with solar panels on the roofs of your cars and on the trunks of the cars and it just seems like something that at some point you will come up with i'm sure you'll be the first but it would seem that a solar panel on on the roofs you know on flat surfaces on certain surfaces might be good yeah at least in certain areas of the country where you have the or the world sure. where you have the sun but i would i would think and i have no idea because that's not my world but i would think that this would be uh, something that would be interesting he even says that we should lean in that direction and in his opinion solar will be the majority of earth's energy generation with batteries and to a point Trump did agree to that but nonetheless he went back and said that 
A. Oil and gas, they're the easiest and the cheapest right now. And saying other places around the world, their temperatures are going the way that they should be, going up or down, whatever. Solar panels on cars, he did mention that to Elon as well, to do something like that. So this way you don't have to keep charging all the time. Again, some, some, some weird stuff he was saying. It was quite funny. But at the end, he did agree that later on in life, we do need to have a sustainable energy. Now, again, Trump doesn't have this clear view of how the world can run on sustainable energy, even though Tesla has a very nice role plan to it. Which, again, going back to it, I think Elon being close to Trump, he can explain to him and say, hey, this is the plan. We got to do this. And sooner the better because the market's going down that way and we can't continue doing these gas. We can continue to do it if they want to lose a whole bunch of money. I mean, Ford and all those other guys, they lose a whole bunch of money. But if, you know, customer sentiments and their wants turn to EVs, which slowly is happening, then they got to go through this route as soon as possible. Sooner the better. But hey, pro-choice. If you want a gas car, get a gas car. If you want an EV, get an EV. I'm just thinking about the guys who think... Once we have this massive shift to EVs, we need to be ready for that. That's all I'm trying to say. And especially when China is in the lead for this. And we all know Trump wants to compete with China. He wants to make sure that we are the US is up one on China. And China right now with EVs and AI, they're coming up. And who is the right person to talk to with EVs and AI? Elon. And which goes to the next point that Elon talked about was cutting rules and regulation he's, he's saying that if rules and regulation continue to increase then you won't be able to get anything done or it takes a long time aka look at california look at some other places even here in toronto man so many rules and regulation getting one thing done takes for flipping ever and so he's saying that hey man we have you know this will kill innovation and if you want us to innovate and if you want the u.s to be up there to be number one we must not have all these restrictions i mean look at europe so many rules and restrictions like it's, it's like germany look at the bureaucracy there it's absolutely crazy right so he's saying that hey with the rules and regulation make it sense make it sensible right if that's even a word but make it in a way that's easy don't make it don't put rules on rules on rules piling up to the point that we can't innovate we won't have this lead or edge anymore to become that country that we once were making cool things so we can't have too much rules and regulation and he was hinting this towards his AI and full self-driving robot taxi, even though Elon has said before that that's not the toughest part because Waymo and other guys are already the heavy lifting and the proof of concept is already there. But getting it across the whole nation, every state has their own rules and regulation. So he's saying that, hey man, don't put too many rules or at least encourage us in, or at least encourage the businesses. Don't get stuck to the point that they can't innovate anymore and they got to take it somewhere else. So he was hinting towards this full self driving robot taxi because, hey man, the robot taxi event is in two months. And Trump agreed to this. He's like, yeah, we can't have so many rules and regulation because we can't be able to innovate. We can't take things to the next level. And this goes with AI and full self driving and robot taxi. So it's Elon is being very smart. He's saying, okay, with EVs, Trump, he likes them EVs, but he's making a pro. It doesn't matter. It's going to hurt the automakers, the legacy automakers more than us because we... We make the best EVs. The credit is for them, not really for us. It doesn't really matter for us. And the EV mandate, whatever. That doesn't really matter. That won't even affect Tesla, whether it's pro-choice or not, whatever it is. That, that won't matter. However, though, we are an AI company. We are going towards FSC robot taxi stuff. And there's going to be rules and regulation that may delay us one way or the other. So don't do that. And, you know, in a way, Trump agreed. He's like, yeah, we, we got to be open to it. We can't just put rules and regulation all the time. But nonetheless, overall, this whole interview was pretty much Trump praising Elon this entire time. Trump praising Elon, wow, you have incredible cars, awesome viewership, great person, you're very intelligent, all these good stuff. Something that Biden would never do. A lot of good stuff happened in this interview and there's a lot of bullish things. And I think a lot of investors realize that, wait a minute, once Trump becomes president, they're going to get along. And if Elon's going to go on the commission, a government commission of the efficiency, whatever it was, you're there. I, I mean, it's just bu it's just bullish for Tesla. You know, when it comes to cooperation between these two individuals, you're going to have a really good thing, a really great thing happening, not just for Tesla, but for all of America because it's in their benefit as well. And not to mention Tesla investors. It's going to be a great time. It's just going to be a great time. But that's only if Trump becomes president. If Kamala becomes president, 
I don't want to get political, man, but I'm just saying. I mean, it's, it's yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to get political or anything like that. But it looks like Trump, not looks like, it is Trump is bullish for Tesla. And based on what happened in the interview yesterday or whenever you guys listen to the interview, it just solidifies that. And I think the market recognizes this as well. So that's all the things that I found bullish about the interview yesterday that has to do with Tesla. If I missed anything, comment down below, guys, because it was a two hour interview. And I tried my best to listen. I listened to like two or three times already. I even posted on my channel that you guys can check it out. All the highlights, not everything. If you guys want to watch everything, you guys can check out my live. Watch the whole thing there if you guys want from start to finish without any interruptions. Yeah, man, if you guys haven't watched this video, check it out right here. Subscribe if you guys haven't already. And I got some very juicy videos coming up. So make sure you guys subscribe and get your I Bought It t-shirt. And I shall see you guys in the next video, man. This was flipping. Let's flipping go. Let's go.